Now, once the survivors of yesterday's shooting get over their physical wounds, clearly there's going to be some emotional hills to climb. And psychologist Eric Fisher is with us now. Dr. Fisher, thank you so much. Thank you for having I me. I want to listen to this one woman, this witness, who made it out of the theater okay, but this is what she was feeling yesterday. All you hear is just gunfire left and right. Anytime somebody tried to just get up and run away, he would just shoot him. He didn't have a specific agenda. He was just shooting people left and right. He was shooting little kids, you know, like six-year-old kids, three-year-old kids, I, I, and moms, you know. And I'm like 22 years old, and I didn't get shot. And it's like, you know, why didn't he take me, you know, instead of that three-year-old or a six-year-old, or you know what I mean? Like, why didn't he take me? I have to believe that she is not alone in feeling this way, that they're seeing children being shot and mothers being shot and she's saying I'm, I'm 22 years old why wouldn't he just take me Absolutely. survivor guilt is very real can you tell us how they're going to work through that or what's the best way to work through that for them and what they might be feeling well the unique situation about her is that she almost had a tragic to say an, an intimate moment with the shooter he mm -hmm. he was three four feet away from her looked her in the eye and i feel that her looking him in the eye saved her life potentially because she had an emotional connection. Her herself potentially may suffer more because she had that moment and then she wanted to try to carry one of the victims out and they said he's coming back you have to run and she left the person there. Numerous times in her interview she said I take a bullet for any of them. I take a bullet yeah. for any of them and I have to feel like her when she starts to settle down she herself will really have a lot of guilt because she's like why isn't it me it should have been me but it's not her it, but it's out of her control i mean how do you get her to see that you you had no control over whether he was going to shoot you or anybody else control is 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 an elusive word because you know she might feel like had i just grabbed the gun or had i done this or had i done sure. that she was that close that she potentially felt like she had to control what we have to look at here is what is the difference between guilt and fear Guilt lets us know when you've done something to other people that we need to fix or resolve. There's nothing she could have done here, right. but it doesn't compute. Fear tries to protect us and lets us know that we need to survive. Fear is often more powerful than guilt in the moment. Guilt will come up later. So that's what a lot of people are dealing with is in the moment they're trying to save themselves and that's what we're programmed to do. The guilt, though, says, okay, what can I learn from this and what can I do with it as I'm working through this? And there is often no resolution for guilt other than self-forgiveness. Mm. And that's hard to come by, isn't it? It is because we often give the power to relieve our guilt to other people. She can't go back to that, that young man who she felt like she had to leave there and, and, and redo that. Mm -hmm. you know, and the other one was the 12-year-old girl who was laying on the ground who another um, survivor had to run by and leave. And I can't imagine what he may be going through after having to feel like he couldn't help that mm. little girl. All right, boy. Eric, thank you so much. We appreciate you explaining this to us. We better know how to understand what to deal with and, and how to help these situation. people who survived. Thank you.